So I'm appointing you, doctor, today President of the United States. All right? And by executive order, you don't have to go through Congress. By executive order, you can do certain things to combat climate change. What is your first order? So that is quite the mandate. I love the idea of having that sort of power. First and foremost, I would not repeal any of the uh, Clean Power Act. The Clean Power Act went a long way in dealing with the impacts of climate change that this report wasn't really surprising for those of us who work in this space. We've known this for quite some time. And it also comes on the heels of the UN report that came out about a month ago. And following that report, I had the opportunity to speak to Speaker Ryan. And I asked him, you know, how are you rolling back all of the EPA regulations that are have gone into effect with the clean power or going into effect with the clean power plan in knowing that what we know about what's been put forward with this UN report. And he responded to me directly. This was on C-SPAN and he said, technology. And he said a lot of what you just mentioned in the introduction, which was, you know, we need the rest of the world to pick up the slack and, and do their part as well. And I'm not disagree disagreeing with either of those premises. We do need to, we need to lead the world and we need, as we have historically, as we have through the industrial revolution, which got us to the growth and incredible place we are globally as the superpower. And we need to do that going forward into the clean power revolution. So I agree that they need to do their part, but we need to lead that. Okay, but you got to get, you got to get specific. Here's an example. I looked into putting solar panels on my home to heat my home. I couldn't get it done. It was way more expensive than the fossil fuels that I buy. I mean, way more expensive. And then the installation process would have disrupted the home for about six months. And I looked around and I researched. So I couldn't do it. I wanted to do it. I couldn't do it. Out in the Long Island Sound, just this weekend, I watched the windmills around Block Island. All right? A whole bunch of them. All right? So specifically, Right now, in America, you're the president, you've got a pen and executive order. First thing you do to improve the climate situation. First thing I do is stop the reversal of the EPA rollbacks. Okay, okay, but nobody knows what that is. Give me, right. give me something so, that you do, all right, that, that helps with fossil fuels going into the atmosphere or something like that. What is it? So the, there are two different things that you're asking in one question. There's two broad strategies here as the president. One is mitigation, and they're responsible. He is responsible. If I was in that role, I would be responsible for strategies to mitigate against uh, carbon. Give, in give, the me give me one. Give me one. One is maintaining the standards from the Clean Power Act, uh, Clean Power Plan for vehicle efficiency. We need to make sure that we are not allowing. Um, vehicles to run on fossil fuels for less than uh, the standards that were implemented with this power plan. When you say Same vehicles, thing. you're you're saying cars, right? Cars. cars? cars. So what do you what do you want on cars? What, a certain mileage uh, per gallon standard. That's what's already, that's what's been put into effect as it is. We don't want to stop what we've already signed off on. All right. As so what, what 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 do you want though? Give me give me a number. More mileage for the gallon. These are the minimum standards right. that we need. So you, you're saying to the car makers of America, you have to make cars that get 40 miles a gallon or something like that. Yes. Let's bring okay. in all that American ingenuity and innovation and really overhaul how we've lived our lives. But you know how much money that's going to cost and you know that it's going to cost jobs because uh, the whole, you know, and you also know there's millions of vehicles on the road now that right. you can't pull so them off the road. I, I agree with you. It's going to be painful. The upfront costs are going to be painful, but we need to be smart as a country and think proactively about how to mitigate mitigate against okay. worse. So you believe that, that automobiles um, run on gasoline are emitting things that are going into uh, the atmosphere that are warming the planet. That's number this one. My, you believe that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What about heating our homes and cooling our homes? So we're talking about, I like that you're bringing up specific examples, but this all falls under the umbrella of using energy poorly. And as we have for hundreds, 
years plus. This is what we know, so it's uncomfortable to move past it and think of the new science and tech innovations that will get us to clean power. But we need to do that because we can't afford. Okay, but, the but they've been trying to do that, doctor. Anybody who invents, for example, a more efficient way to heat and cool your home, a cheaper way, all right, is going to be a gazillionaire. Just as I said, I wanted to put the solar panels in, but right. the technology isn't there for me to do it. I couldn't do this it. Is getting cheaper, and it will continue to get cheaper as it becomes. But when it gets cheaper, then I'll do it. But I can't right. be putting two hundred thousand dollars on the roof. You know, it's just crazy, and and that's far beyond. And I'm a pretty affluent guy. It's far beyond what what working Americans. All right, let me advance this. So. You want technology, as I do, and I think most people listening to us right now, we want technology to be developed, and it is an R&D. They're all doing it, Tesla automobile. You realize a Tesla automobile note costs $100,000? I mean, that's what a Tesla automobile costs. Um, you right. know, you got to get it down, Elon, or whatever your first name is, before it's going to make a difference. I, this, the fact that we can't adopt right now is not lost on anyone who's making the recommendations, but it's something that we are transitioning towards. We're very much in a critical window of time right now because if we keep living the way we're living and if we don't make the adjustments, and it's going to be, it's not going to happen overnight, but we need to first be aware that it's necessary and then continue to right. take those steps that are affordable I, for but us. But I, th I think you're there. I, I think. You're there. I think the R&D, the major corporations would love to have clean energy because the first ones who get it are going to make a f bloody fortune. So what about India and China and, and countries like this where you can't, we can't impose standards? I mean, it was funny that France is the big, uh, you know, blah, 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 global warming, global warming, global warming, France, 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 Paris Accord, Paris Accord, and they're one of the worst violators. I mean, and what are we going to do? We're looking at them going, okay, you're, you're throwing it over on us, and you guys aren't even close to doing what you should be doing, not to mention China and, and India, the two biggest polluters in the world. Right. We're the worst polluter in history, and we can't afford with 12 years left before we start seeing the worst, most catastrophic, devastating impacts of climate change. And I'm not even talking about what we're seeing in the West with these wildfires, where there's hundreds of people still unaccounted for and the hurricane season just ended and we're yeah, but there's no out. cause and effect doctor you can't say the wildfires were caused by global warming because california has had a drought all right and That's and right everything's now. a tinderbox down there uh, things were exacerbated by the temperature global temperature increasing all of these maybe. things would not have been nearly as bad as they were nor are they affordable bill hundreds of billions of dollars were already spending on post-disaster recovery and now we're saying that's going to be the cost this report laid but out california the has the strictest environmental laws in the world in the world all right so I'm not buying that argument that, that this hurricane is caused by global warming. We have a natural cycle of disasters on this planet. We've always had them. Ask the dinosaurs, okay? They're not around. Do you have, last question, hope that climate change is going to, change, going to be radically altered by some government? Do you have hope that'll happen? I have hope in humanity and our ingenuity and our common desire, we're all different in our own ways, that's fine. We're Americans first and foremost in this country, and we all want a bright and prosperous future, and that will be the driving motivator to get our act together and to really collaborate with our neighbors, with our community governments, with our state governments, and then we need leadership from the top down to address this really complex, connected problem. That's what has come out of this report, is how integrated all of this is. The food oh, I agree eat. with that. I mean, if it, if it is true that Armageddon is coming in 70 years, I mean, we got to pay attention to it. Hey, doctor, thanks very much. We appreciate it. Very interesting discussion.